Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Bet US NHL Pick Show. I'm Dana Lane. The final stanza of the regular season is upon us, so let's get you some wins uh, to finish off that regular season. Then we'll go into the postseason, which is usually uh, my hottest time of the year. I'm very excited about the postseason, needless to say. Let's take a look at our first game, the New York Rangers at the New York Islanders. Game time, 7.30 Eastern time. The Rangers are tied with Carolina for the top spot in the Metro Division, so it's a very important game for New York. There's no you know, taking time off. And, of course, for the Islanders, a team that had some hardships to start the year, have been playing extremely well over the last month or so. And, in fact, if this team had another month, they probably would make a bid for the postseason. But uh, we'll see who we think is a stronger one in this game. And the Rangers definitely definitely need this game a lot more than the Islanders do. Let's take a look at the number on the game. Rangers minus $1.30. That's been bet up from minus $1.25. So you're seeing some public money come in on the Rangers, as you would expect. Total is holding steady at 5.5 under minus $1.20. And that completely makes sense with tonight's starting goaltender. Uh, Shesterkin will probably get the start against either Varlamov or Sorokin. I've gotten conflicting reports on this. Best thing to do is get on Twitter, follow the uh, Islander beat writers, and see who's the first off the ice. Whoever's first off, that's who's going to get the start tonight. Uh, either way, that doesn't change our selection in any way. And you know, for the Rangers, I mean, it, it's really hard to go against what they've been doing of late. They're on a three-game shutout streak, which is uh, they, they've shut the uh, Philadelphia Flyers out. They shut Winnipeg out. They shut Detroit out. They haven't allowed a goal. To put this in perspective, the Rangers haven't allowed a goal in nine days or a five-on-five goal since the 642, of the mark, 642 mark of the third period against the Carolina uh, Hurricanes, which was four four days ago, or uh, four games ago. That's 186 minutes and 42 seconds, and it's, I mean, how do you go against that until unless that changes? That's a very difficult trend when you're not allowing any goals, and I know that's not deep, but you're, when you're not allowing any goals, it's really difficult to all of a sudden think tonight's the night against the Islanders, who have played well, but they've played well because they played well defensively, not not because they're putting a lot of uh, pucks in the net. So uh, keep in mind as we move forward with this, the Rangers regular season this year is probably going to go down as a top five regular season in the history uh, of this team. And if you remember back in our preview shows, somebody said that the Rangers will probably contend for a Stanley Cup. We'll see if that happens, but they certainly did not make a liar out of me during uh, the regular season. I digress. Uh, over the last month, of course, Igor Shosturkin is 6-3-1 with a goals against average of 1.86. He also has three shutouts in that span. Also in that span, the Rangers are second in regulation wins with nine. They're number one in goals against, allowing just two goals a game in that in that span. They're also giving up just 25.6 shots per game over the last month. Only Carolina is better in that category. New York has allowed one goal or less seven times in their last 13 games, and they have, have held opponents the 30 shots or less in 11 of those games. They are going to walk into this one as well with a little bit of revenge on their shoulders. The Islanders have really had the, the Rangers number of late. And I think the Rangers, this is the one final piece of the puzzle before they go into the postseason that they want to put to bed. And of course, the Islanders are trying to send a message uh, for next season. So let's take a look on at tonight's official selection on this game. The Rangers are playing, as we said, some of their best hockey. They have something to prove against the Islanders who have had their number, but the Rangers are on a 21-6 and run against teams that are coming off a two-goal or less offensive performance, which means the Rangers clamp down on teams who are struggling to score, and that's where the Islanders are at this point. We're going to go ahead and lay a little bit of juice tonight, but we, as we've seen some separation in the NHL, I feel... Uh, feel less and less like I I'm, I'm worried about the bankroll and more worried about getting the better team, which we're getting here in the Rangers. So we're going to take New York, the Rangers of New York, minus $1.30. Game two, Philadelphia Flyers at the Montreal Canadiens. 7 o'clock Eastern time will be the first 
uh, puck drop in that one. And we know neither team is going to the postseason this year, but that doesn't mean there's some there's not value here. And I say this all the time, that, guys. Just because a teams are not going to the postseason. Don't just discard them and say that's not going to be part of my card tonight because a lot of times you're going to find really good numbers, uh, sharp numbers, especially if you like a uh, like the like the favor. Uh, a lot of times you're in that minus 20, minus 30 range, which is really hard to find with the better teams in the NHL uh, at this point in the year. I mean, they, you know, look last night with Colorado, Colorado laying better than 450 and you know, losing, by the way, to Seattle. So, you know, these are the games that I kind of look for. I try, you have to stay sharp for sure because you have to know who's in goal and who's in and who's out because there's a lot of moving pieces to the type of, to the teams that are not making a postseason at this time of year. So you do have to be sharp on that, but you can definitively find an edge uh, in these type of games. Let's take a look at the number Montreal minus $1.35. There's been no movement on that, and that doesn't surprise me because this is not a game people are going to look at the bet. So, no movement on that, but we do see some movement on the total. It's at six and a half minus a dollar ten. That's been bet up from six, so we're at six and a half minus dollar ten, where the public likes the over, as they have done here lately. Favorites and over have done very well in the NHL, not only over the last month, but uh, over the last uh, the entire year, really. Uh, goaltending in this one, Martin Jones will get the start. Carey Price is listed for Montreal, but just make sure with that because. Of course, we know that Carey Price is coming back from an injury. This will be his third start. So you want to make sure that you know the goaltenders that you're getting before you put money behind him. But uh, I'm thinking Carey's going to get the start in this. They're going to they're gonna ride him a little bit and put a good flavor in his mouth heading into next season. And tonight in Montreal, of all, all nights, is Team Photo Night. And I'm not sure if uh, you want to put this team's photo on the wall, but I guess they're going to have at it. This will be the last chance for Montreal to get a home win on their current homestand. And I, I think right now, I, I've watched Carey Price over the last two games, and I think we could start leaning on him a little bit. Uh, he seems to be pretty effective, and I always, you know me, I mean, I always stay away from, you know, teams that have big-name players coming back because I think it takes a while for them to integrate themselves back into uh, the team, no matter what the position is, and, and especially goaltender in this case. So I think Montreal right now, I'm I am confident in Carey Price. I think we're going to get the real, the best of Carey Price. I don't think there's going to be, you know, the 80% Carey Price. So I, I'm confident in that regards. Price has been tested 49 times so far in his comeback. He's made 45 saves. That's good enough for me, especially in a game against uh, Philadelphia. And we are watching, though, uh, morning skate. And why morning skate is important? Well, you're watching for injuries. We know that Jake Evans uh, is, is maybe in, maybe out. We're waiting to see a morning skate with that. Looks like Paul Byron is out for Montreal. And I think this is going to be a spot, though, where Montreal are going to be a motivated bunch. Philadelphia has lost six straight games. And Montreal certainly is not the only team that's dealing with injuries here. Uh, Philadelphia is also dealing with injuries. Uh, Kevin Cottonen is questionable, as well as their leading scorer, Cam Atkinson. So if you take a leading scorer off of a really bad team, uh, how much that just makes them even more worse. So I have I have no desire to be part of Philadelphia, at, uh, part of the Philadelphia side at all in this. I don't know where their offense is going or, or coming from, even though, uh, they're playing a bad Montreal team, but they are having to go on the road. Montreal can sweep this season series, so if there's one silver lining to this se season for Montreal, it's that they have Philadelphia's number, I guess, along with just about every other team in the league. But Montreal can sweep this season series uh, with a win tonight. And, uh, you know, look, you're at home. If you, you, you think this, and I, I've said this a million times, if you're going to get a motivated team at any point, Last game of the road trip, especially if you have a home stand, especially if you haven't won a game at home against a bad team and you have a goaltender that's going to give you infuse a little bit of inspiration in you. I, I like Montreal in this spot. So let's take a look at the official selection on this game. Philadelphia is 5-25, guys. The game after scoring two goals or less and 4-18 of after losses of three goals or more. 
I think Montreal beats them one more time, and I think they beat them convincingly. We're going to lay the dollar thirty-five just to make sure, but I'll take Montreal for my second selection tonight. And then on to game three, we go to what was arguably the worst game to what is no doubt the best game on the schedule, uh, Toronto Maple Leafs at the Tampa Bay Lightning. Puck will drop 8 o'clock Eastern time, and the Leafs are securely in that second spot in the Atlantic Division. They have five games to play. Tampa Bay not as secure, but this could be a, a matchup for you know first-round home ice supremacy in the postseason as both of these teams are two and three in the Atlantic Division. Uh, Tampa's still trying to fight off Boston. They only lead Boston by one point with six to play for each. So nothing is decided yet uh, in the playoffs. But this is certainly an interesting game, uh, two styles that are the same, and a Tampa team that needs to get this victory. Let's take a look at the number. Tampa Bay, minus $1.20. That's about right. Uh, home favorite against against Toronto. Seven under, minus 30. We're getting a seven finally. That opens seven under, minus 20. We are getting a lot of under money, which you would expect after seeing a seven. Uh, that's a big number. I, I live for today. We're going to see a seven and a half. I mean, if this league had another two or three weeks, I, I swear we would see a seven and a half because uh, scoring is out of control and we see favorites winning uh, easily. I mean, it's nothing we've seen nine or ten goals um, scored this this year, which we've seen numerous times. Okay, uh, goaltenders. Campbell will get the start for Toronto. Played a little bit better of late. They played a little bit better in front of him as of late. So Campbell is not quite back to the Vezina Trophy uh, you know, candidate that we thought he was going to be early in the year, but still playing well. And, of course, Vasilevsky. Uh, is Vasilevsky, but he's had some demons of late as well. Uh, with this being, I, and I think this is going to be a highest pace game. I mean, there's no way the pace of this game is not going to be high. You have Toronto and you have uh, Tampa Bay. That's just a style that they that they play. And this is going to be, you know, both teams know, hey, look, we're sending a message to uh, the to each other in the postseason just in case we face each other. Uh, otherwise, Toronto would have nothing to play for. But I think that there is an underlining um, in a message that Toronto wants to send uh, to Tampa Bay, and they each want to send to each other. I don't think they're going to sit back. I don't think they're going to be afraid to show their hand. I think this is going to be one of the most entertaining hockey games of the year. This is also for a chance for Tampa Bay, uh, who dropped a recent game to Detroit as a 460 favorite. Some some places it was minus five dollars. Uh, they lost it to uh, Detroit. Uh, as a huge favorite, they've lost four of their six, but they are on an eight and three over streak. So it, again, losing games, but the pace of play has not changed for Tampa. And, and one of the reasons we'll talk about this a little bit later, but uh, or in a second, but one of the reasons is just their lack of the uh, ability to pay attention to def defense. A uh, Toronto win tonight does clinch home ice advantage for Toronto. So again, we're not going to have them in a look ahead spot where they don't care about the the regular season as they're just focused on the playoffs. Tonight is a huge game for Toronto. And I think, uh, going back again, I think Tampa Bay is a team that's forgotten how to play a structured defense. That we've we've seen them kind of look forward to the postseason. And we've seen this in previous years as well. They've had, if, if you look back at their schedule over the last two or three years, they've had bad losses to bad teams. So this is nothing new for Tampa as they just try to move forward towards uh, towards the postseason. But to me, it's it's a team now that's a little bit more worried about being individuals and their own scoring stats. And and for me, when you're not playing that structured defense and you, you'll hear it from their organization. I mean, it's, it's about playing structured defense. That's how you win games in the postseason. And if you're not doing that, then you're going to have a difficult time uh, come that time of year. But I think, again, this pace of play will dictate a little, little less structure, a little bit more in individualism. And I think one of these teams will get close to this total uh, by themselves. Let's take a look at tonight's official selection. The over is 23-5-1 and one in the Leafs' last 29 games on the road and 36-13-6 on an a overall run. So <laughs> I don't know how you go against that. Seven of the Lightning's last nine home games have cashed overs. So that's exactly what we're going to get tonight. And we're getting nice plus money, at least some plus money, on that seven. That's attractive to me. So we're going to go ahead and take that. Okay, well, that wraps it up for today. Thanks for joining me. Again, we'll be here tomorrow. 
around the same time, giving you three more selections going into the weekend. Also, don't forget to check me out on social media at Dana Lane Sports. Answer any question that, that you might have. For my executive producer, Antonio, I'm Dana Lane. We'll see you again tomorrow, and good luck tonight with your selections.